Hello, this is not the first time that I've done this part of the um, Voron build. So what we are intending to do today is to put the B and A, which isn't pictured, belts in. So first I'll tell you what I've done wrong the first few times. So the first time I've done this, I basically I pushed them through and I cut them after I've done it. Which is fine, but it makes tensioning a bit harder. The thing that's recommended in the assembly guide is that you put one through which I've done here and I'll show you how to do soon and then you take that out and cut another piece of belts to the same length so then you have the same amount poking through on both things all right so first I'll tell you what I've done wrong the second time I built this so have a look at what I've done wrong here so the belt comes through the tensioner here all the way across and then goes through the stepper here past the idler onto this idler. Now you can kind of see I've um, routed it to this plastic bit here. Whoopsie days. So that is a bummer but luckily that length is longer so um, I don't have to worry about my belts being too short. So it's actually going to route through that part there. Alright so <clears throat> let's take this off. So we're going to pull it through this part here is called the afterburner and in um, previous steps you would have um, built the XY gantry as well as the A and B drives <clears throat> now for my memory's sake the bottom is B so this is the B motor, this is the A motor I incorrectly said in previous ones that the top one is the X one that's incorrect because this is a core XY printer and the belts sort of work in conjunction so X isn't one belt it's a combination of two belts and you'll notice that too if you put one belt on when you're trying all this stuff it won't kind of work properly or it'll feel a little bit weird because as you move it forward on the X axis this bit will move in one direction and normally it needs a second belt to counteract that okay so take this belt out <coughs> <clears throat> okay, so let's start from scratch. So what I've done earlier is I've measured two belt gates and I've cut them to be the same size. There we go. Whoop. There we go. So same size belts. <coughs> So now, because I've routed one wire through, <coughs> sorry, one belt through, <coughs> that's a bit better. So in terms of which orientation it will be working on, <laughs> actually while I'm here, I'm curious to see how much wear did I do on this bit, not much. But you can see there's some grinding on the belt itself. So these tensioners, <coughs> I recommend you start pushing it through here and you have the, the flat part so if you want a basic guide of what's going to be happening, your belt, the flat part will be going onto the idler, like this. I should be cleaning that gunk off. It's annoying gunk. Anyway, so you're pushing that on that. And the teeth will intentionally be hitting the stepper or this part, <coughs> depending on which bit's which. Okay, so let's do that now. So this bit's reasonably easy to do because you can look at the idler and get a feel for which side goes on which. So we're going to do this first. We're going to push it through. Now you'll see this bit gets stuck. Now I recommend getting some tweezers. <coughs> this gets easier once you've done it one or two times. So I'll actually turn this around to make it easier to see. This part here, I'm going to push it through 90 degrees, like this, until it's visible on the other side. And then I'm going to use the tweezers 
to help push it through on the other side. <coughs> it's um, so I don't know how visible it is, but that part there is the belt. I'm going to try and push that through as much as I can. And again, this comes a lot easier with a bit of practice, and I think you can get to the point where once you've pushed it through a little bit, you can push through the rest. So the goal is see if I made it through. The goal is to make it go through that part, so then you can grab it and route it through the rest of your printer. through yet not quite <clears throat> I think this belt's the taller one on this side through yet. Just wondering if I can push it through. Okay. This is definitely a lot easier on the um, other side. It's a bit annoying. <clears throat> <laughs> so you can see something funny that's happened here is the belt did not route properly. All right, I'm going to cheat a bit here. I'm going to push the tensioner forward a bit so it'll be easy to push through. I'm going to have to undo this a bit because this is not on the idler part. I'm going to pause this and get this bit through because I'm going to have to do it again anyway and um, come back in a moment. Right, so I've skipped forward a little bit and I've routed through the B belt if I'm right here. So this has gone through. Now I'm going to show you roughly where it's gone through. The top one here is going through the tooth bit, it goes through the idler, which I'm about to show you on the other side, and then importantly it goes through here and then the cable gets routed outside there. And then you're going to push it back in. Whoops my tooth bit but I'll put that back in. That gets routed through now you can see that the teeth side is on this stepper. Yep now this belt goes all the way across and will go onto the top. It goes through here and across there. Now what you missed while I paused this video is I freaked out and thought my belt was too short because I was trying to put it through the second tensioner. You do not need to do that. And I was silly. So anyway, I've put it through here again. And I could push this through because I've cut this belt to length. I know that I can do this part straight away, which is great. So this goes through here. Going to push it through. Got it. There we go. It's a washing machine in the background. Don't worry about that. Um, a tip for this bit is that if you pre-bend the belt a little bit, they'll push through like that. So basically, like grab your belt, push it a little bit, so it um it'll go through there from natural tension. So now I've done that bit. I know that my belt is the right length on this side because again I've pre-cut it, and that saves a bit of time. So push this through here. Bottom. There we go. 
Okay. Slippery side. So again, slippery side, or well, the non tooth side, goes onto the idlers. See? Excellent. Now, again, don't do what I did the second time and route it through like that. It needs to go through this bit. So, let's do that. In a way, the fun part is all the mistakes and learnings you do, but this will help you save a lot of time and avoid doing the dumb things that I've done. So this bit needs to go through here. Now I use some tweezers to help push that through, like this. You can also use the stepper to help push it through. There we go. For a little bit more. There we go. So we have it's on the teeth. See? On the teeth. Now we can continue routing it around the back. Let's go here. I think this is a record time for me um doing the belts on this. You get better each time you do it. So if there's a mistake you've done, it's not the end of the world. It just means you're going to be a bit more pro at doing these bits. Okay, so slippery side goes through here again. Now you'll see that there is an idler that this routes onto. And then it goes through there. Now you have to be careful not to go through on the tooth side because it has a flange to stop it going through. Now I don't think I explained that well. That'll make more sense when you do it. Basically, you can't wrap it through there and push it back to be on the bottom side. Here we go. Push this through. Now, we're basically done. So the rule of thumb, they've told me, is that you should have six to eight, uh, five to six teeth poking out. Now, because of my um, retention there, these things are going to poke out a little bit more than expected. And that's fine. So I'm going to... The important part is both the belts pop out an even length. Okay. Let's um, have them poke one or two more in. Again, as long as they're matching. Okay. So, once you've got this part, this is pretty cool, I reckon, in my opinion. These red parts here, I think this is an M3. Oh, I'm going to get it wrong. I think it's an M3 by 8 or M3 by 12. Check your instruction manual, to be honest. These will push in, and they'll actually hold a reasonably firm... Oops, they'll hold a firm fit until you screw it in. It is important to make sure your teeth are right there. So again, see like this, the screw holes there will hold it in place. You will need to hold this while screwing this in, because it will want to pop off. So screw it in by hand, get a loose fit. Now, depending on the size you build, this is a 250 mil. There we go. With a 250 mil, the um, screwdriver is a bit of a tight fit. See what I mean? But it still works. Once you've done one side, you can hold both the belts into make it easier to tension on the other one. In a previous video, I have um, let this go fairly loose, and then when I pushed it across, the belts just slid through. Again, not the end of the world, but um, cost me a few minutes. All right, so I can feel that's reasonably tight now. Let's do this one. So I'm going to grab the other part. Yep. So socket head button screw. Again, same thing, push them through here, make sure they're the same teeth count because you've pre-cut them. And this helps your tensioning process be much easier. Make sure your belts are evenly tensioned. That's the goal of it. So I'll quickly show you about racking after this. So that's probably a little bit loose because this bottom bit here needs to be on the actual idler. Let's push that on. Do it again. You can do it. <laughs> oh, 
So see, as I, if I'm to adjust the tension on these, it quickly tries to counteract whatever you're trying to do. So the reason this thing's um, playing funny buggers with me is that it's trying to sit a little bit inside the extrusion channel. So to fix that, you grab the other side and pull it away. So there's less bit that's inside the extrusion channel. Come on. So it's probably not that exciting viewing, but um, that's build videos, right? All right, so that's in. I'll double check that this will be in if we push it through. So I'll do that now. Excellent. So let's check these bits are in. So I can see the bottom one's a little bit loose, so I will need to tension these up. And that's fine. Okay, so I'm going to have a bit more pop out on this side, I think. No, it's not too bad. So, bottom belt, pull it up here, excellent. Top belt should be able to be pulled through a little bit more. Again, for tensioning self, it, again, because you've um, pre-cut these, if they don't match up, it's probably because they're not on every idler. <coughs> it's on that idler. They're all matching up. They're great. Good. Okay. They do match up. So again, we're going to put this bit on. Now, after this video, what I'll do is I'll um, take off these red bits and retension them so they're an even amount popping out on each side. Not that critical, but you want to do that a bit later on once you put the, so this middle bit's called the afterburner. When you put the front shroud on, you don't have too much room for spare belt stuff. Okay. I'm going to put that in again. So you can't put this on with a screw there. You have to um, push this in and it should sit. There we go. See? It makes it much easier to tighten then. Now a small advantage of this side is the screw will probably almost fit. Again holding this part in. Excellent. So now that you've done that part, see so the afterburner has both sides attached properly. You will want to go back and check that this A moves smoothly. So it should ideally move like this. So when I'm moving back and forth with both belts on, it should not move left or right when you're pushing like this. Now having put this on the 3D printed part before, this is much smoother, which is good. Okay. The other thing you need to check, now um, Nero3DP does this a lot better, is called racking. So I'll show you the front. Racking means that this should be straight. So when it moves to the front, it should touch both sides. If it's tensioned too tight, it will um, try and flex onto one side. If it's too loose, then, well, that'll behave weirdly as well too. So just make sure that it hits both sides when you move it back and forth. If it is wrong, what happens is you will um, loosen your belts a little bit, take this bit off, so this part here, I'll do this one. That part's basically, and there's one on the bottom as well, loosen that, and you'll be able to bend this on the X and Y a little bit, especially on the Y. Um, get it straight, so by straight I move it so it's like this, then tighten it a bit so they're actually locked in straight, and then um, retention your belts. That's the, the brief version of it. Again, there's better videos for it. Um, what um, I would should have had done at this point is there is a XY clicker, like an in-stop clicker, 
that should go on that side. So when the belt moves across here, see, that tells the printer with Farm Clipper later on that you've reached too far and that's zero point. So hopefully you enjoyed it. This is a much shorter belt video. I'll, again, I'll go for a quick look through of where I've routed. So I started at the tensioner, put it through there because it was pre-cut. Pre so I know how much of that needs to do. Goes across here, through across here, and then route it through there, pushed out there, pushed back in, and I use the tweezer to help it go through here to let me um, pull it across. And then on the, I'm gonna get this wrong, the A side, no this is the right, A motor, the A motor, routes it through here, and then routes on that one. So again, with the other side, it's flipped, 